Plummer will throw, and it's caught for a touchdown. Monroe Young into the end zone. Cal finds the end zone for the first time today. Well, they desperately needed that. Creativity, a nice little scissor route with the receivers. Another pick route, but it's this time, just it, like the last time, it's legal. Four-year starter for the Cardinal. Ashton Daniels, the quarterback. And a design run. Lost the football, picked up by Cal. Jackson Sermon will scoot it along. The scoop and score, and Cal leads for the first time. Penalty marker is down, back near the line of scrimmage. It is a good touchdown, and Cal leads for the first time today. Look, Daniels is trying to get out, get out on the perimeter. Ball is stripped, and then Cal does a good job, and Sermon does the rest by scooping and scoring. McKee hangs, throws over the middle, it's intercepted. Daniel Scott bringing it back. His second career pick in the big game, and Scott inside the 10. For Benjamin Urasik and Daniel Scott, his seventh career interception. When you try to throw that crossing route open, your eyes will be your biggest betrayer. Jaden Ott tries to go up and over. He's in. Touchdown, California. Well, like I said, when they first got the football back, if I'm Cal, I'm not putting this ball in the air. I'm giving it to number six. There's no doubt. He does. He does the job finishing with the touchdown. Well, the California Golden Bears come back and knock off Stanford with a dominant fourth quarter. Keep the ax and win the 125th big game, 27-20 over the Cardinal. Never was in control of this game. They're up 17-6, going to the fourth. Then things changed. What happened? Well, it was a scoop and score, obviously, when Anderson was trying to get extra yards on the, on the quarterback keeper that really kind of started the tumbleweed rolling against the, the Cardinal. But coming back, Plummer makes a timely throw right there. This is the big play. This is a crucial play, the turnover. And the scoop and score by Sermon to get in the end zone gave the Bears seven and gave them some momentum. This play as they get back in off the second turnover is able to get themselves in the end zone. So it's just a good time. You see Scott with the pick almost scores again, dominating fourth quarter by the Bears. So California wins the big game at home for the first time since 2008. They've won three of the last four now from Stanford. They still have one game remaining. Stanford will host BYU next Saturday night on the farm, while Cal Friday afternoon, a Black Friday matchup as they take on UCLA here at 1.30 in Berkeley. But a great comeback by Cal from down 17-6. A couple of touchdowns in a span of a minute 24, and they pull away and get the win despite a big game record 61-yard field goal from Joshua Cardi. 27-20, Cal wins big game. The 125th big game. Sellout crowd in Berkeley for Cal and Stanford. Tons of storylines surrounding this game. None of those storylines, however, had anything to do with the actual game. Both teams no longer bowl eligible. Last big game of legendary broadcaster Joe Starkey's career. The Kevin Moan statue unveiled on the 40th anniversary of the play. Third quarter, Stanford ups their lead. Quarterback Tanner McKee to Elijah Higgins. Cardinal up 17-6. Cal's offense was struggling, and then Stanford delivered them a gift. Fourth quarter, freshman Ashton Daniels fumbles out of the Wildcat. Jackson Sermon recovers the scoop, the score. Touchdown. Cal got the two-point conversion. They go up 2017. Later in the fourth, Stanford needs a field goal. McKee intercepted by Daniel Scott. That would seal the game for the Bears. Here's how Joe Starkey called the game sealing play. Inside the 10. 27 yard line. Stanford's got time to throw, but there's all Bears. They've intercepted. Are they going to bring it to the house? Down the left sideline, inside the 10, down to the 8, and the Cal Bears are in business. And business they were. What a career for Starkey. Nearly five decades on the job. Well done. Cal wins it 27 to 20. Well, it's quite a scene here for the 125th edition of the big game. And one of the heroes from this win for the Cal Bears, Jackson Sermon. I, there's a million things I can ask you, but I got to start with your first career touchdown. 
Because it was an interesting play. It felt like kind of a poetic big game play. Walk me through what happened. No, it was, um, you know, D Daniel Scott made a, yeah, Daniel Scott made a great play and forced a fumble. And then Irby picked it up and it looked like he pitched it, but I think he fumbled it to me and I just picked <laughs> it up and I, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. And then I was able to just hold on to the ball and run to the end zone. So it was, it was, uh, it was a really fun play. Very opportunistic. Um, I, I'm, I'm beyond words right now, uh, just how proud I am of you guys and how you guys pulled this thing off. What was the difference in your mind between the first half and the second half? Uh, I, think we, I think we made some more plays on defense. You know, in the first half, we, we gave up some points early, and that made it tough on us. But uh, second quarter, we really, I mean, we didn't give up any points, but no. the second half, we started making some plays and getting some turnovers, and I think that was really the difference in the in the two halves. Yeah, you held him to one touchdown in the second half. But what I what I like, Jackson, is this. You know, they show the play. Now they're going to show the fumble, <laughs> city fumble and score. <laughs> well, what do you think about that? That'll be on the screen next year. The double oh, fumble. Be... <laughs> <laughs> that's that. It was a really fun play, and I'm I'm fortunate I was in the right place at the right time and able to capitalize on it. We were talking yesterday about how difficult this season has been for you guys. Not exactly how you guys thought it was going to go, but to win this game, this is your first big game experience. It, what is the emotion? What did it feel like out there? Um, you know, yeah, it's been a tough season, and and we've uh, battled through some adversity, but. To win this game in, in that kind of fashion where, you know, we had to battle and make some plays for four quarters straight. Um, it's a great feeling and we're all really happy to get a get a win, especially in, in, you know, in the big game. So, well, we're happy for you. We're happy for your dad, the defensive coordinator and your head coach, Justin Wilcox. Kind of an amazing full circle moment thinking about the fact that he was at your birth. I know it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> He's, pretty uh, wild. As he says, I've known him as long as you can know a person. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think you got some celebrating to do. Well, in front of almost 52,000 fans who all stayed until the end, Cal gets a win on their home field against Stanford for the first time since this guy was running around 2008. <laughs> Justin Wilcox, Daniel Scott, congratulations. I, I know that it's been an emotional season, an emotional week. So, Coach, I'm going to start with you. What, what is the emotion you're feeling right now? Oh, man, uh, I don't know how you put that into, the wor into words, but it's the, the joy of watching the team and uh, the way they've stuck together and they compete and they care about each other and to get a victory in the big game uh, and have on our home turf, it just is a really special moment and you can tell by the reaction everybody, you can tell by the reaction of the team and they just never stopped. They kept playing and kept playing and guys like him and other guys made big plays and we pulled it out. Uh, the second half was incredible, especially from the offensive side of the ball. And I, I, I don't know where Jaden Nott is. It'd probably be hard to find him, but I would love to introduce myself. But what can you say about his production in the second half? Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, our goal coming in was to make sure he touched the ball 20 times. I don't know where he ended up. We want to make sure he touched it. And we talked about that at halftime. And whether we were going to hand it to him, toss it to him, throw it to him. And uh, he just makes plays. And so uh, he did a great job. Uh, again, receivers. Uh, O-line again, and then obviously the defense yeah. played fantastic and two huge takeaways. Well, I'll tell you what, he touched it 21 times, there so he was right on target. But what I liked, Coach Wilcox, was this. Second half, trips, trips bunch, strong gun, and you had him. And you came back, and you did it, yeah. you did it, you did it. That was Yeah, yeah, again, we found a friendly formation, and we – Kind of kept tossing it to him and try and pin him and get him around the edge because he does have some great speed and he made a couple nice cuts in there. And again, the guys at the line of scrimmage did a good job getting him loose. We're kind of delaying the point here, which is yeah. Daniel Scott, the <laughs> basically the game ceiling interception. Yeah. Walk me, you had one in 2019. I talked to you yesterday. You said, I think I'm ready for another interception in the big game. So you spoke it into existence. What'd you see on this play? Um, I mean, I see Jackson playing great defense on the tight end. Uh, I was just reading the eyes of the quarterback. Kind of brought me to the number two. He kind of bent it in, and by the grace of God, we made the play. Thank God. Six-year senior. It was senior day today. I know you've been through a lot. You could have gone to the NFL last year. You came back. What is this moment to be able to celebrate with your fans and your teammates and get a win over Stanford? I think this is what it all means. This is the reason I came back. Uh, you know, obviously battling through adversity through the year, but to see the smile on the coaches, to see the smile on my teammates, like it, it made the world to me. So that's all I would say. I have a feeling you guys have some singing to do in the locker room. So we're going to let you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, all right. Thank you guys. Oh, As always, yeah. Oh, yeah. player of the game, Daniel.
You get a Pac-12 hat. We don't give these out lightly now. We've never given one to a coach. And we've never given one to a coach, but this is a special coach. So we're going to give one to Coach Wilcox. Well, I appreciate it. I'll I'll, uh, take this and spread the wealth to the other coaches. (laughs) You did a great job today. Congratulations, guys. guys. Thank you. Go Bears. Jack picked it up, and he was off to the races. And, uh, I mean, biggest play of the game. I think we we would all agree. A huge play and finding a way. And, you know, that's a veteran player, you know, one of your best players on the team. That's, That's what you're looking for. And he delivered. And. Daniel Scott, again, another huge play. And then Jaden, you can kind of go down the list, but there were some big, you know, there's moments when you need somebody to make a play, and that was as big as any. And when when he came to you guys this year, you knew he was a really good player. Are are these the kind of moments that you hope you get from a guy like that? Yep, absolutely. And I I would just say he he expects that from himself, you know. I think uh, guys that have played a lot, Daniel, him, you know, a couple of those guys on O, uh, you know, they, they expect him to make the routine plays every time and then the big plays, you know, as often as possible. But they're, those are the ones because, you know, in, in a game like this, when you play good football teams, you're going to need some uh, one-on-one wins, whether it's a pass rush, whether it's uh, Jeremiah Irby making a couple big stops man-to-man when you don't have help, you know. And same thing on offense. You're going to have to make some, you know, get some one-on-one wins uh, to win football games. And, you know, Jack... Jack made a uh, really big one. We know how important this game is for us as a team, the individuals in this room, uh, in the locker room, and our administration and support staff. Um, and then, I mean, as evidenced by the turnout, our fans were incredible. I mean, what an awesome environment. You know, what we need to do is keep improving and getting better and better. And, you know, we want the big game, obviously, to to look like that each year, but we also want you know, the other games. And we got to do our part as a football team to draw people here. And uh, But, man, our fans and the students were just incredible tonight. And, you know, fortunately got to be on the field uh, post game for a couple of these now. And and just, just to see the, the joy in their faces, uh, our team, the players, the people that work here and play here, but also just the fans and the students. I mean, it is pure joy that you see on those faces. Uh, after the big game. So that is one of my favorite things to do is just stand there and watch them. I, guess I was going to ask you to compare winning a big game is great, whether it's here or yeah. at Stanford. Is there any difference about winning it here? And Cal had not won it here in quite some time. Yeah, so yeah, it's always great to win at home. I didn't realize it was 2008 until somebody told me early this week, you know, brought it up maybe in our phone call that we have on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, I mean, it does feel good, you know, home crowd. And obviously, they'll have a – they'll travel well just across the bay. But having our – on our home field, that feels really, really good. And I, it's hard to rank them. You know, they're all uh, equally uh, emotional. And uh, the teams are different. The dynamics are different. The seasons are different. But, man, it it's as good a feeling as there is. Justin, it's been a while since uh, you guys were able to – Get Jay not going, and he, I think he had no yards at halftime rushing. Mm-hmm. And then he had 97 in the second half. Can you just talk about him hanging in there and, and how he did that and, and maybe if he got some help up front? He did. Um, <clears throat> we had some things specifically, you know, in the game plan just to make sure that he touched the ball. And we wanted to make sure that Jaden got the ball a certain number of times. And uh, we were a little behind, uh, you know, in the first half on getting him touches. And uh, that, there were reasons for that. We knew they would play us in some heavy run boxes, uh, or we anticipated. We didn't know. I guess we anticipated them playing us in some heavy run boxes. And so uh, we got some pretty good matchups um, on the perimeter to get the ball out and get some yards going. But we still needed to get Jaden the ball. And so he got it going in the second half. The O-line um, made some really good plays. You know, unfortunately, we kind of stubbed our toe a few times, whether it was a penalty. We had a, a false start penalty, uh, a 15-yard variety penalty as we were deep kind of de- or in the red zone there uh, that hurt us, you know, and we had a, obviously the two red zone turnovers were were rough, uh, but, you know, the guys kept playing through that and uh, uh, I really credit to them, you know, never flinched and just kept playing and playing and then Jaden got going as we know he can and everybody doing their part. Kind of following up on that, how did the game planning and game calling go today yeah. and during the week? Yeah. And I'm not a smart guy, but I know Stanford had been gouged running the, 
teams running the ball the past three weeks, and you guys really didn't run the ball very much in the first half. Yeah, and we, we were wanting to. There was just some things that we wanted to test early uh, in, in terms of getting – we thought – you know, some of our matchups on the perimeter were going to be very good. We also knew that Jaden needed to get the ball and we needed to run it. And so uh, we talked at halftime, you know, some of that in the first half, again, whether it was by down and distance or a, kind of a, a something that upset the drive, a, a negative play where you kind of got out of a, a friendly down uh, to run some of the stuff we wanted to run with Jaden. Uh, we got him loose a couple times on the on the rail routes. Um, so there's another way to get it to him. But we, we definitely did talk at halftime about getting some runs called to run the ball. And uh, again, credit to all the offensive staff. Those guys did such a fantastic job. They're a selfless group. They're uh, extremely prideful and hardworking. They did a great job uh, you know, this week putting it all together. And we'll, all of us can, can learn and be better. Um, and coaches and, and players alike, there were some things that we got to clean up. but. We certainly wanted to get him the ball even more in the second half. And follow up, if you can say, was there, you know, obviously a collaborative effort. Yeah. Was there one guy, though, who kind of had final say? Obviously, you. Or yeah, I guess ultimately I do. Uh, but I, everybody had their piece of it. And uh, I'm really just appreciative of how those guys uh, worked this week and, and were communicative, and not only during the week, but on game day today, and um, just great people and who care a great deal about uh, the team. And uh, I just, I, I think they all share in that and thankful for, for, for what they did. did. Did you do a lot of things differently or did you just tweak things? Really? Yeah, there's, I, I wouldn't say you're just going to start from scratch. You know, um, there were certain, you know, matchups that we wanted to kind of uh, try to take advantage of. You know, we, we really felt like we wanted to distribute the ball to obviously I talked about Jaden, but we really want to make sure Maven and Jay Michael and Jeremiah got chances uh, either quick game or down the field. We wanted to make sure we got some balls launched, and uh, we did. We had, you know, I think we had a, and they would tell, they would say the same. I mean, there's too many drops. I mean, we probably had I don't know half a dozen or or so drop balls that hurt us on some drives. Um, they also made some really good plays. So if we can eliminate you know, or really shrink that drop ball number. I also think Jack did some really good things. We got to clean up the red zone. For, I think those, I think they were both first downs, um, the, the interceptions. So just those things can really change the course of how the offense performs, you know, because if you can, I think we had the ball and we're moving it. In first half, I think we were down in their territory five times or so. We only end up with six points. So we got to do a better job when we get down there, just putting the ball in the end zone. and. It's easier said than done, but it's decision making. It's catching the ball. It's not committing a penalty. Um, so we certainly feel like we got to play better um, you know, all around. Just uh, get some sleep and start tomorrow. Yeah, short week. We move everything up a, a day. We had just practiced a, a, a little bit because you're playing a one day earlier. So we got to take that into account. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go to sleep wake up and uh, start our preparation for UCLA. I want these guys to enjoy it. And we do have a quick turnaround. And I know they'll come in we, I think tomorrow afternoon. We'll, we'll have a team meeting and get some film watched and get on the practice field for some work. Um, I mean, yeah, it meant the world. You know, see the statue even unveiled earlier this week. And, um, you know, knowing that it was going to be a packed house, a lot of alumni, a lot of old football guys here. Um, you know, it was bigger than just us, you know, on defense or on offense or, you know, our team as a whole. Is, it's a whole community, whole family. So I'm um, happy to do it and happy to keep the axe here. I mean, I think they played a huge part. Um, getting a packed house in there. Uh, it's probably the most people I've seen since I've been here for sure. Um, they were loud throughout the game, you know, not, you know, start to finish and see their support, especially in a big game like this, the big rivalry and to get the win and see them on the field is, is memorable, very memorable. You, can, you kind of touched on this, but um, did you know that Cal hasn't won a big game at home since 2008? And they haven't won back-to-back -back big games since 2008 and 2009. How does that make you feel, kind of in the grand scheme of you know Cal football and the legacy you'll leave here? Right. Um, I mean, I think it, it means a lot. You know, we we mentioned about it a little bit this week. You know, the not having won here in a long time in the big game. Um, you know, but I think for us, we just wanted to keep the axe here. You know, it deserves to be here. We put in a lot of hard work this year. Um, you know, battled through adversity, especially in the middle pack of the year, and to you know, get that win, not only for the team, but for the whole Cal community was huge, it was huge.
Uh, I think it was definitely a different atmosphere than all the other games this year. And it was, uh, it was one that was awesome to play in and uh, definitely had a fun time out there. And, and man, it just, we, we stuck, um, stuck in it until the end and it, it just felt really good. But I think we, we knew going in that we were going to be able to score. And so um, just being able to fight through it and persevere and, and the defense helping us out too with a couple, that was, uh, that was awesome. Can you talk about what you saw? On the touchdown play by uh, Jackson. Oh, I just uh, <laughs> I just looked up and I saw him running. So I didn't I didn't see much. I just saw the crowd go crazy. I saw him running with the ball in his hand, and I think at, at that point we were down five. So it was uh, I knew that was going to put us in the lead. So that was it was an awesome big momentum changer. And then um, you know we knew we were going to have to get the ball back and, and do something with it. So it was uh, it was good. The defense helped us out yet again and put us inside the ten. So then we were able to, to punch it in there at the end to go up by ten. Uh, it was awesome. How the play calling and play design for this week go for you? And did you have a little more say in the matter? Before? Yeah, I had a had a little bit uh, of say going in the week. Kind of, what do you like? That you know, they're like, are, are you okay with this one or that one? And, um, and believe it or not, I mean, we didn't have a ton of plays on on the wrist card. I mean, we had probably only carried about fifty plays going into the game, so we were running multiple plays over. Again, so um, we wanted to kind of keep it concise, but have a different flavor than than we were doing, and have uh, multiple options to, to you know to go with the ball in each play. How many do you typically have? A lot, a lot more than that. Twice as many. Yeah, probably twice as many. Well, leading up to this week, I hadn't you know known a ton about the big game, and then um, you know he, little snippets here and there, people coming up saying you know you got to beat Stanford. You know, I knew it was the rival, but. Um, didn't hear the, the tradition behind some of the stuff and the acts. And, you know, last week, you know, talking with Joe Starkey about the play. Um, so, you know, I, I learned a little bit. And definitely this week, th there was just a different buzz kind of around the whole entire week. You kind of feel it on campus, more people, you know, going around, running around. We were at the, the little rally last night. So, it, you know, it was a different feel. It was a good feel. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it was a great feeling, and, and um, they definitely helped us win the game, for sure, just with their noise and energy whenever Stanford had the ball. Uh, definitely definitely made a difference, I think. And it, just being able to feed off the crowd, and uh, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. All right, this we can confirm that Jackson Sermon, yeah, it's all you. Jackson Sermon did score the touchdown. That's, that one was obvious. Go ahead and questions for Jackson. Jackson, uh, congratulations. A um, couple of things. One, can you just take us through what happened on the play with the touchdown? And it looked like the ball just kind of jumped up at you. Yeah, uh, D. Scott made a nice tackle and forced the ball out. And then Irby picked it up. And <clears throat> I'd like to say he pitched it back to me, but I think he I think he fumbled it. Um, and it you know it bounced right to me. I. I was in the right place at the right time. Um, and just all I did that play was I didn't mess it up. So the ball bounced right to me, and I just ran forward. How much did the big game mean to you as a player and as a teammate? And how much did it mean to you because your dad's the defensive coordinator? Yeah, I think, uh, I think as the week went on, I started realizing more you know, how big the big game is to a lot of people in the Bay. and. Um, everybody that's gone to Cal and Stanford, <clears throat> a lot of history behind it. I had a good time learning about, you know, all the stories that go into the big game. And it, it meant a lot to win that kind of a game, um, you know, battling through adversity this, se adversity this season. And then, uh, and then it was also fun because we were able to pull out a win in front of a big crowd. And that was, that was really fun to see. You know, all those people show up for the game and, and all that support. Um, and then, you know, whether my dad's the defensive coordinator or not, um, I'm always excited to get a win. So. You showed that that's your first career touchdown recovery, or mm -hmm. touchdown, excuse me. Yep. How does that feel, uh, you know, for you as a player, both as a player, and now to have etched your name in big game history? Uh, it's, it's really neat. As a defensive player, you don't get a lot of opportunities to score touchdowns, so... Um, you got to enjoy it when you get them, and it was 
it was very neat, especially given the timing of it all. And um, yeah, you've been to a couple of big games, right? Either as a recruiter in the stands, mm -hmm. so not you've played in one. From the perspective of a player, how cool is the big game? Um, it's a totally different atmosphere from watching it. I mean, after winning, it's like you see all the fans, and it's just like they crying. They're coming up, congratulating you, and uh, it's just it's just a totally different feeling other than watching it. And I would say, like, I feel like it's a like big thing. Like, I would definitely love to play in a lot more and stuff like that. And it's yeah. Um, it means a lot. I mean, I've talked to a couple of people uh, that were a part of the big play, and they were all just telling me, you know, go out there, play your hardest. Um, a couple of them asked me a couple of questions of, like, what it is, to, like, what does it feel like to play, like, as a DB, and because uh, they were a DB themselves. And uh, it's just a great feeling to go out there and just, like, represent them as i like, so young in my career. And uh, them just looking back and giving me feedback and telling me that, you're doing a good job. You're on the right path. So this is your third, third touchdown in four weeks, and you know, you're a fifth year. So how does that feel for you to have that on the big game and to have the ax, like, to keep the ax? Um, such a surreal moment. Uh, last year, I, I got down at the one and didn't score. So that's been on my mind for like a year now. And just uh, being able to get in the end zone for this big of a game with this much history and tradition and, and, and passion from the fans with the sold out crowd. It, such a such a great feeling 